The Celia Symphony is a nice big ship and it cruises overnight from Helsinki to Stockholm. We'll be arriving in the morning, fresh and ready to begin our three-day visit to the capital of Sweden, boarding along the covered gangway. Of course, you could fly to get from Helsinki to Stockholm, but going by ship is a lot of fun. It's like being on a cruise. You have some of the advantages of being on a cruise, such as this very comfortable ship. It's like a big floating shopping mall. You're even greeted by a clown as you get on board. And there's all kinds of restaurants on board and lounges and nice observation areas. And it's a pleasant cruise. It's overnight. The rooms have either a view of the mall or a view looking out towards the water. So it's like cruising. But in our tour, we chose not to do a cruise of Scandinavia because if you're in the ship the whole time and then just pull into port for a day, you really don't see as much. The cabins are very comfortable. The ship is quite clean and modern. And it's nice just to be on board for an evening and overnight. And then the next morning you arrive in Stockholm ready to tour. We'll be spending three nights in Stockholm and here's a little preview for you of some of the activities that we'll be enjoying here. There's a number of boat rides that you can take. There's the Nordic Museum we'll be visiting in a later program. We're presenting a series to you on Scandinavia that's going to add up to about five hours of programming. It began with our visit to St. Petersburg, Helsinki, now we've arrived in Stockholm. The next cities we'll be visiting are Oslo and Copenhagen. As our grand tour of Scandinavia continues with some views of the harbor, Scandinavia has a wonderful old town. It's the Gamlestan. It's a medieval district that was built back in the 12th and 13th centuries, and it's still standing very well preserved today. We'll be taking you on a walking tour of the Gamlestan coming up in just a few minutes in this program with a local guide. Our hotel is located in this part of town. We always like to stay in centrally located hotels, particularly if they're in the older part of town and they're nice and clean and have good facilities as the Hotel City did. It's a great place to stay. You could also stay in the more modern downtown and be surrounded by a variety of shops and other attractions. And let me tell you from the vantage of downtown what we're going to be doing. We're visiting Stockholm, Sweden as part of our tour of Scandinavia and it's a very interesting city. We're spending three days here. There's that much to do. There's museums, there's shopping districts, there's all kinds of boat rides, many fine restaurants. We're staying at a nice hotel in the old town, the Gamlestan, and now we're out walking in the newer part of the city in the middle of the shopping district. The modern downtown area is very friendly to the pedestrian for there's a lot of malls where cars are not allowed. So it's very easy to get around on foot. And there's also a subway and easy bus service to get you from one side of town to the other. But you'll find that Stockholm is reasonably small. You can walk from the old medieval town to this modern shopping area in about 15 minutes. And all along there is plenty of interesting things to see. There's shops everywhere and parks and fountains. You'll certainly want to visit several of the museums in Stockholm, particularly the Nordic Museum. This has a vast collection of Swedish furnishings. There's decorative arts, table settings, costumes, jewelry, photography, ceramics. It's the elements of everyday life that are stored here like the Smithsonian does for America. You'll see history come to life. They have interactive exhibits for the kids where they can dress the part of their ancestors. Sweden is, after all, a very modern country today with a proud past, and this museum helps to recapture the old traditions for the younger generation. Nordic Museum on the left, and on the right, the Vasa Museum. You see the three tall masts there, part of the wooden building structure. Inside is the ancient sailing ship, the Vasa that sunk on its maiden voyage back in the 17th century. We'll take you inside in a future episode of World Traveler, and we'll be taking you to Tivoli and Skansen. Now we're going to take you on a walking tour through the historic part of town. We always like to have a local guide take us on a walking tour. It's the best way to see someplace. 
Yes, I was thinking we are going to do a walk in the old town, in the old part of town here for maybe an hour, an hour and a half or so. And then we see how much time we have left. But I think that's, that's what we'll do this morning. Does it sound all right? Okay, so why don't you follow me? Right now, we are standing on the edge of the water. If we would have stood here uh, about 700 years ago, because at that time, when this, when the old town was built up, this was just the the port. The port was here, or the water went up there. But the land has has rose. That's why it has grown. The old town. You know, this is the shopping street that will lead up to the where you. I think some of you took it yesterday. And this is the street with the restaurants. So we we try. We went far far on that street. And those streets were from the beginning the state, the, the city walls around the state. Now we call this around the city of Stockholm. We call this now the old town, but it used to be to be called the it used to be the city of Stockholm. But this square that we're standing here it, on, it's called the Iron Square, because at the time when it was water here around, this was um, a place where they where the ship came in and you, you know, you reloaded them and, and shipped. Stockholm became a big trading uh, town. So they, they shipped out iron around the world because Sweden has already in since four or five hundred years, we have been a great producer of iron in the north of Sweden. And it, it came down here and we shipped it out. I'll just tell you, this is the smallest street in Stockholm that we go taking now. So, because Sweden has already, in since four or five hundred years, we have been a great producer of iron in the north of Sweden, and it it came down here and we shipped it out. I'll just tell you, this is the smallest street in Stockholm that we go taking now. So. <laughs> Did everybody get through? No, <laughs> that's the problem in this. <laughs> yeah. But I think you all <laughs> make it. This is a little bit later. You can see on the architecture that it has this. It means that it's probably from the 18th century uh, with this style, Renaissance. Very typical for, for the old town is also that they have saved the, the structure from the medieval. This is how the, the streets and words uh, lay out. And you see, in most, most time they do straight streets. That's more practical. But in this time they, they had streets like this. And they really have saved it. Even though houses have burnt down, they have built them up on the same places. So the, so the look is about the same. And this is really the heart of the town. So this is the most expensive tip. They have very small kitchens and very small bathrooms. And most houses are also protected, so you can't, you can't make the kitchen or the bathroom any bigger than it is. Okay, we can uh, continue maybe. What we have a great day today. Now we are on a street that was very famous because it, on this street, if you wanted to find you know, women on the streets, you, you went here. And uh, well, you could you could go on many places, but uh, this was one of the most famous, and especially this house here. They had a lot of women. They used to lean out the windows, you know, and they yeah, come here, come here. And, no, I don't think you would find any women <laughs> right now. And, uh, they're still sleeping. <laughs> Wealthier people who they could afford a fire assurance. So they bought a fire insurance, and they, it looks like this, and they put it on the top of their door. Aww. And when, the, when it was a fire, you know, it's maybe it burned about everywhere, the firemen came, and when they saw a house who had an assurance, they mostly tried to, <laughs> to, save, the, to, to save that house, you know? <laughs> So it was really important that you have this little sign there. Well, I've got a question here about uh, a woman, how many percentage women? There are about 40 of the people who work, there is about 49% are women and 51 are men. So it's pretty even in Sweden. As I told you before about the politicians too, there are, in the government there are 50% women. And as we walk along, we have a chance to chat with some local people. 
That's a nice advantage of having a leisurely approach to the visit. We're spending three days here, so we've got plenty of time. I'll just short tell you this is St. George. And he went down to the lake and he conquered the dragon and saved the princess and got the half of the kingdom. And you see the princess there, she's really grateful, she's standing there. And St. George, she's cutting the head of the dragon. We'll just make a short and you'll look around what it looks like in the inner garden and then we'll go out again. But this is mo almost all the houses, that, that's how they built them, with an inner garden, you know, like this. So we'll just go in here. It's a nice surprise as you walk through these narrow lanes of the old town to come across this central garden courtyard. It's a very peaceful and tranquil setting. And this is really typical of many of the yards here in the old town of Gamlestan in the heart of Stockholm. That was the typical pattern in the Middle Ages. The buildings would be constructed right up to a narrow lane. And then behind you have the private gardens. A nice quiet space and a lovely place to live today. There's shops nearby, there's restaurants and cafes. It's become a very desirable and expensive place to live. And then just around the corner is the main square of the old town. This is the oldest square in Stockholm. This was the medieval trading square. They all come here, they had marketplace, you know, solar things, and it was the central point of Stockholm really at in the medieval times and until very late. The houses you see around are very old and now you see the different times they are there from. That is a very old house if you see with the, with the straight. Uh, the big house here used to, it's the Burs, Burs house, that's what you call it. Stockholm, Stockholm Stock, Stock Market. Market. And on the top floor it's the Swedish Academy that's the one who, who decides who will have the Nobel Prize in literature, for example. And they also, you know, deals with the maintenance of the language so that we don't use too many, for example, English words nowadays in our, you know, in the newspapers. Well, this is the main square of the old part of town. And today it's a very lively neighborhood. There's a marching band that comes through here nearly every day as part of the changing of the guard ceremony at the nearby palace. Coming right up at the end of our program, we're going to give you a short concert of the changing of the guard at the royal palace itself. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to eat. They have the menus of the day, or they have they have a lot of the pies and, and also crepes. It's very nice and soups and salads. You can find food in all price ranges here in Scandinavia. Lunch might vary anywhere from five dollars for just a small sandwich, right on up to twenty, thirty dollars for a nice meal. And then for dinner, you can expect to pay 20 to $45 for an atmospheric meal. A lot of these restaurants have got their basement cellars converted into barrel vaulted dining salons. And you'll find a whole range of cuisines in Stockholm. There's Chinese restaurants, Japanese, Italian, traditional Swedish with the smorgasbords. There's everything a big city should have in Stockholm. Shops, cafes, museums, nightclubs, and yet the population is only about one million. So this is not a huge metropolis. Many neighborhoods have the feeling of a small town. It's the capital, this is the parliament building. The palace is next door. There's a very impressive city hall that we'll be showing you in another episode of World Traveler. Stockholm is a city on the water for it's located on 11 different inhabited islands. One third of the city area is water, one third of the city area is parklands, and one third is the built up area. So it's only natural that you'll be riding boats to get back and forth from one part of town to another, particularly if you're going out to the museums, the Nordic Museum or the Skansen Park where we're heading now. It's an open-air historic park, very similar to Sarasari that we visited while we were in Helsinki. 
Skansen is the first open air museum in the world. It was founded way back in 1891 and it shows how people lived and worked in the past in the different regions of Sweden. Buildings and all of their contents were collected in the late 19th century from throughout the country and reconstructed in this one park going way beyond the normal boundaries of a typical museum which is one building and you walk inside and look at the displays and artifacts inside one building. Not at Skansen. There's over a hundred buildings and you go into the building itself and see the original tools and furnishings and there are guides dressed up in period costumes to explain everything to you. The initial focus here was on traditional farming and also lapish culture from the northern part of the country. And later Skansen was extended to include the way of life of the agricultural laborer and also the upper classes as well as the folk movements and elementary schools. Later in the 1930s and 40s, the different activities and living conditions of the town have also come to be represented. So we find there's printers, there's bookmakers, there's chemists, and then with the establishment of a small furniture factory and a mechanical engineering workshop in 1991, Skansen is now stepping into the industrial age. It has a complete range of Swedish history all in one outdoor park. We'll take you on a more detailed visit to Skansen in a later episode of World Traveler. And we're also going to take you on a boat ride. One of the best ways to see Stockholm is from the water since there are lakes and the Baltic Sea on both sides of the city. It's surrounded by water, it's immersed in water. So what could be better than a boat ride to see Stockholm? And there's a number of tours that you can take if you've got time for a half day tour or a full day tour, they're available. Or if you just want to spend two hours on the water, you can do that as well. Take your pick. There's an itinerary that will fit your schedule. For now, we're just going to spend a few minutes out on the water. And we'll take you through more of Stockholm in a future World Traveler program. You're watching a series. This is part of a five-hour series on Scandinavia produced by the Hawaii Geographic Society, photographed on our tours of Scandinavia. We visit there every year in July.